Brandon, how are you? Good. Good morning. How are you, Dan? Not too bad. By the way, do, do you want people to call you Dan or Pop or what's the, what do you prefer? Pop's probably easiest, but it's really up to you, man, whatever's easier. <laughs> Thanks for volunteering to facilitate today. And Glad to help. Yeah, I see that you have every year uh, way ahead of the game. You've already set up everything in the, the meeting notes. Yeah, I got a lot of help, I think. Uh, should have done more there, but. Hey. All right, I just popped in the, the link to the meeting notes as well for people to sign up. Give obviously some time for folks to jump in and all that fun stuff, right? Yep. Yep. And also um, get scribes if anyone wants to jump in on that as well. Yep. Thanks. Well, we can start the meeting. Matt Jarvis is here. The man, the myth. Good to see you, Matt. Thanks for that. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yep. I'll take that. That's great. <laughs> That's I love your background, time. by the way, John. Oh, Amazing background. Yeah. First time joining us. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks. So we will kick it off, I guess, when, Brendan, you want to start in a couple more minutes, give people like five minutes? Yeah, we can probably wait another one or two more minutes then. Okay. We get started. No worries. Any volunteers for scribes? Or should I wait until more people join? That's fine. I think it would just fill up whenever. Um, scribe, we realized after a while, so just, just like, Kind of just taking a couple of notes here and there is good enough since we have um we are actually able to pull off the recordings and i think there was an issue where we were discussing how to kind of make that available as well um it's a very manual process right now kind of like um how it's done with the youtube videos is that we don't have anyone to do it <laughs> yeah so yeah I, i'm just is that I'm, i was thinking in the context of meeting notes right like is somebody mm -hmm. Taking the, anyway, no, no worries. Okay. All right, it looks looks like we have critical mass. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Dan Papandre. I'll be the facilitator for the SIG security meeting for December 9th today. Uh, just a reminder, the meeting is being recorded and posted to YouTube shortly after. Your participation in these meetings is an agreement to abide by the SIG security code of conduct, which will be found in the repo. Now that I got the... Uh, housekeeping out of the way. Let's start the magic. Um, so in terms of our proposed agenda today, um, first uh, on the docket here is to discuss replacement of exclusionary language in favor of inclusive language. Very important topic. And the security repo um, looks like Andres Vega, you're the point of contact for it. So if you would like to kind of discuss with the group. Thanks. Bob. Yeah, I think I think before actually, sorry, uh, ahead, before Brandon. we yep. jump to that, I think let's kind of do around. I think there were uh, mentioned a couple new folks so we can do oh uh, apologies i wasn't yeah. on the agenda no worries go ahead yep so let's do a round of uh who's new to the meeting just want to welcome you to sig security <laughs> we were right into oh, business first... all 
John. You're very efficient. Uh, John, John, John can tell Chief Architect with the uh, Accurex have been in the container scene for a while, uh, getting more active in CNCF, so we're seeing a lot of you guys. Awesome. Welcome, John. Hi, another John here. Uh, John Lee from Toronto, Canada. Uh, I'm actually the manager for most secure computing. So we're basically a security consulting firm and uh, currently with some focus as uh, cloud uh, applications, uh, mostly on the Kubernetes. Thanks. Awesome. Anybody else? Cornering the market on Johns, new members in Johns today, which is good. Awesome. All right. Yeah, if Johns, you can, you can add kind of, um... I'm not sure if the link is still there. I'll paste it again in the meeting notes. If you add your name and kind of where you're from, uh, it also gives a good way um, for people in the meeting to kind of sync up if they have something interesting to talk about with you or common interest. Sorry, Paul, go ahead. Yeah, no worries, no worries. I literally was just reading from the script. Uh, over. <laughs> Over to you uh, again. We can discuss the uh, the first uh, topic on the agenda as we saw there. So, Andres, if you Andres, if you'd like to uh, comment on it, I'd love to hear about it. So, we did so with the group. Yeah, as I dialed in into the Zoom today, you were saying wait for people to join and all that fun stuff. And I was like, wait, since when did this call became fun? I'm not sure I'm <laughs> right. Place. I did fun once in my life. It was terrible. It was not for me. I decided never again. But well, now that we have Pop here, things might change. I'll reconsider that. So that issue, the title is self-explanatory. Uh, I think this is actually large of the broader concerted like initiative from CNCF. Uh, just, we don't need to like take it up all under like the big umbrella, but like individual projects can like self-start and start making changes there. Uh, obviously, uh, there, there is so long low hanging fruit. There, there's things that are maybe sprinkled on on text all, all across the repo that we can start to take up on. Obviously, uh, moving from master to main is is more of a change. Well, I think Brandon, you'd looked into some of the dev tooling built around whether like what be the level of impact that making this move might change. So we might might want to evaluate that. I've had a busy day in the last, well, busy two days since opening the, the issue. So I haven't quite caught up on the latest conversation. I saw a quick mention of linting. So, yeah. Yeah, I think there's, um, I think there's a new PR that's open. Um, let me find that it. it is example of PR fall 72. Um, John Hill, Hill, Hilgus has opened it. It looks pretty good. Um, and I think kind of that may be kind of good place to put it as well. Um, let me link that in the pull request. Yeah. So yeah, I think that could be a good way to kind of just scan the, scan the repo. Just make sure that those those words are highlighted, and then we can, you know, flag them every time there's a new PR and things like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. Then the other part of it is just like consciousness and self awareness of like what language we use during these discussions. So just call to action. Keep it in mind. Uh, I think we understand the the importance of of fostering an inclusive mm -hmm. environment. Uh, just in the interest of, of the broader community and having like pl plural thought in this discussions and, and making sure that everyone feels safe and encouraged to be part of the group. That's that. I don't know. We need to talk a lot about it, but if you have thoughts, either speak so, up. So there's one thought I have in that the, if you all haven't seen the KubeCon talk by Celeste Horgan in terms of inclusive naming, maybe that is a good kind of start to understand like what, you know, what that's there. So I'll put this in chat. 
Um, I thought it was very well done. And she, I think, was uh, on, I believe, the, the group with, I think, Stephen Augustus and some folks from IBM and Red Hat that kind of put together that inclusive naming. So it might be, I just uh, put, uh, put that in chat right now. So if you all want to take a look at that, just to kind of understand the grounding, obviously, and why it's a very important topic. By the way, Chase, I thought I saw you raise up your hand. Did you, did you want to say something? I just had a question. Um, all on board, full speed ahead, choo choo. Uh, but do we want to like formally recognize the inclusive naming.org as kind of the, the standard bear? Is there, uh, I'm thinking about, you know, putting something in the repo so that people moving forward who are new uh, discover it rather than trip over it. Sure, great idea. Rock and roll. Um, I was just, just reading the PR. So it looks like if I'm understanding the PR right, that there is some low hanging fruit in the docs that need could be addressed fairly easily, right? Is that, am I understanding that right? That there are things that need addressing that are already in the repo? Are you talking about the issue I filed or? Yeah, in the issue, yeah. Yes, there are, there are instances uh, I came across, particularly assessments is the area I've been involved the most, where self-assessments describe the architecture and properties of a project. And there's mentions of whitelist, blacklist, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, <clears throat> these assessments end up checked in at uh, the assessment sub directory once completed. Uh, so yeah, those were some of the instances. So I think, um, Andres, um, I think you created this as a proposal. So you'd be willing to kind of um, head up this um, this effort. So I think we can we can make this a kind of official project and track it on the project board as well. Okay. Sounds good. Chase had unmuted. I think he wanted to say something else. And I love working working with Chase every chance I get. So uh, I was gonna ask, and it's totally cool either way, but for rolling things, right? Like the repo and content makes sense. For a point in time artifact, like an assessment, if we do replace all language swapping. I have a small wonder if maybe it doesn't change semantics of certain language. It's possible that that's totally uh, not a real concern, but for kind of historic artifacts, I'm not totally sure if the right thing to do is to go back and change them in place, or if the, the best thing is to move forward with that language kind of negotiated in real time with, with the other entities. Um, that was my only thought. That's fair. I, I see I see that as a valid argument. We should evaluate that and just balance. I could see either way. I just wanted to mention it. Totally. It's a good consideration. So I'm going to interrupt and get on a hobby horse if, if we can tolerate a slight sidebar. Here's the, and I'll keep it to a minute. You know how we normally think of metadata sitting here and data is over here and the there's huge amounts of data and it's moving in streams. There is a rethinking of this that the metadata is the bigger part and that that goes with the data. And the reclassification of things like gender and other designations that at a later point in time become either problematic or just re-architected as in the case of gender. So the metadata frameworks need to go with the data. That's kind of the messaging. And we're trying, we're wrestling with this as an enterprise wide a data protection scheme. And so I thought I'd bring that up here as it really, it can change the way we think about things like access permissions and the tagging that goes with that. Okay, end of sermon. Um, so, oh yeah, no worries. I was just, everyone okay with this for us to move on to the next topic. No th other thoughts on this? All right. Next up, the venerable Brandon Lum talking about 
discussing the security landscape. Again, I read from scripts, everyone. I, I'm a trained monkey. That's what I do. So. Thanks, Bob. So, um, so we were chatting about this um, security landscape um, somewhere earlier in the year. Um, the idea was kind of we we're looking at the original security landscape where you know there's a bunch of categories. Um, actually, let me let me just share my screen. I think maybe easier to show the example of it. Um, share the screen. I think it's this one. Cool. So if we go, this was this is kind of like the first landscape that we did, right? So we had these things called categories, and then if you go into categories, we just basically say um, this is identity access control, privacy provisioning, blah blah blah. Um, unfortunately, we created this, and we realized there were two kind of big issues. One of it was it wasn't very useful. <laughs> It's just kind of like defining here things here and there. They really talk about um, like identity access control. You know, this spans multiple things. How does it really fit into the ecosystem and things like that, right? These concepts like alone um, are useful to be defined, but they're not really useful in terms of talking about it in the ecosystem. But the other thing that we we had here was you know there was a lot of um, uh, back and forth on what exactly these things meant. And so the idea was that we would kind of create a security landscape version two, uh, which really provided a view of the security landscape through different processes or like um, different components of the ecosystem. So we had this issue security landscape iteration two, that we kind of started out a little bit. And um, the idea was like, we wanted to be able to say, okay, here's like a couple of processes that a couple of, you know, larger topics that you'll be involved with in um, looking at the security ecosystem of your organization or your deployments. And for example, one of them that we started looking at was, okay, building a cloud native application. Um, here are the steps that you kind of need to do. And then for each individual one, like if you hover over it, you talk about the threats, you talk about uh, the prevention and mitigation. And also if you click more details, you know, there, there may be some information about um, what projects you can use or what are the relevant projects which touch this. Um, and the idea here is that, you know, we would have these multiple processes and we could also show like how these topics were linked to each other. For example, if you're building a cloud native application, part of it is like signing um, the, the content to ensure the integrity. But at the same time, you know, when you're setting up the infrastructure, you need to ensure that you are able to verify that, that signature as well. Um, so the idea was to kind of give a high level overview on how these things interact with each other and also provide uh, pointers to specific projects. Now around like, I think it was May or something, um, uh, we also started again on the white paper, white paper effort. And we found that there was kind of like an overlap between these two things where both of them were kind of trying to define like high level topics and break down cloud native security. Um, so what we said then was that maybe let's um, use the cloud native security white paper to kind of form what are the big topics around that we should look at. And then the landscape is gonna be scoped down really to how do we map the concepts of the cloud native security white paper to actual projects and products? And do you see it almost as like a quick start? Like what I mean by quick start is, you know, like the, the white paper should be in, in my, in my humble opinion, should be like a, this pretty exhaustive, you know, data of like all of these pieces. And then somebody who's new to any project in general, in terms of security, should be able to look at this and quickly discern, okay, here's what I need to do for, you know, whatever it might be in the landscape, right? Um, is that kind of the thought process as to as to why, you know? Yeah, exactly. And, and kind of the way we were seeing the 
uh, cloud native security white paper. And for those that were involved with the process, you saw there were things like, uh, we took off all the, the projects and examples and said that, okay, this will link to the, um, the landscape. So the idea is that the white paper will be updated and every single section would be clickable where it could link you to the appropriate part of the landscape. So if you're going through and you said, okay, um, workload integrity and you click on what are the things in the landscape, it'll bring you to the landscape with a certain filter that shows you visually what are the projects that you have to look at and what are the kind of other components that is linked to as well. Brandon, one, one observation if appropriate, or yeah. I don't know, I'd rather wait for feedback at the end. Cool, yeah. I'll, I'll ask. So people have different entry points, regardless they're, they're new or, or otherwise. And, and when you look at a, at a landscape as this like vast land of things and you're seeing everything that pops up is a little bit overwhelming. You talk about dependencies and, and relationships of these different projects. I wonder if it'd be good to visualize as a directed graph of projects that might intersect or if like you're coming in because you've been working on, on OPA and just realize there's all these other projects that you could potentially integrate or interoperate with. Like what are the things that OPA works with that you might want to look next or Falco or Spiffy, whatever your entry point is. Or right. if you're new or relatively new, you must have some background in, in systems somehow, most likely. So based on what your vantage point, what are the immediate things of relevance instead of looking at like, oh, well, these are the 50 or 60 or 70 security projects. Yeah, ex exactly. So um, I think the idea is to have initially what's a graph um i think it would be ideal if we could kind of have that same representation so you would look at for example if you click something in the white paper it would bring you to let's say dependency management right so you look at this and then you could um let's say it involves some projects um for dependency management and those projects also appear in other parts of the ecosystem right so then it would be relevant to look at start looking at those parts of the ecosystem to kind of see um, so for example, dependency verification, maybe linked to supply chain. So then, you know, someone could, could kind of start looking at supply chain, like how does, how do these things relate to each other? Um, or, you know, they could also take that approach, like you said, where they, you know, just zoom out a little bit, see what are the adjacent connected, connected topics and then look at those as well. Cool. Is, is anyone familiar with, um, what Cheryl Hong's doing in terms of the tech radar? So she's basically like taking the, the landscape projects out there and, and, and saying, okay, CICD for instance, right? And it was like, here's the, what the, what, what the, um, the community or the folks using it so, and users were saying were, were the projects. Would be ideal also is to include a link to that in this document as well. So then, because well, eventually she's, I believe they're doing a security specific one of this. And that would be ideal because then it's the actual projects that are that are you know the folks are actually using out there, like you know the Opas of the world, the Falcos, and all the others, right? And Spiffy, right? Yeah, that, that's interesting. I, I I think I haven't really um, seen that on the the radar yet. So let me oh I may go ping Cheryl, see what's what's up over there. Yeah, because I, I know when I talked to her, like that was on the docket, but I think they, they went to, they went first with CICD, they did observability, and I think security was one that like, again, everybody on this call would have some amazing feedback to, you know, all right, so could be helpful for, for Cheryl as well. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for bringing that up. One thing I've heard from end users and like prospective end users is they've used the CNCF trail map as, as the blueprint for implementation projects. So they get that list and yes, we're gonna bring Kubernetes and, and this other like peripheral things to it. And maybe that takes nine months to a year. And at that point is like, okay, what should we look next? And then this, they discover this radar or so they discover something else. And at that point in time, like all this afterthoughts become like another like lengthy planning and deployment effort as opposed to like bringing earlier and 
like to their teams and in their projects to say, hey, we have a greenfield deployment. We need to plan all the security things ahead. Like if, if we're looking at this, like what are, what are the other things like Chase said, like the when and the where, like making that when and where like much earlier, like an immediate as opposed to like, oh, like let's get to all this, this things like we discovered during the journey, like much later on. And put like bake them in to start up. Yeah, I, I think one of the the, the potential um, um, things that we're looking at also is kind of um, recommendations to um, the CNCF of what are some other projects that we think would be good to be part of the CNCF, as well as also recommendations on, you know, if we, if we took the security white paper and then mapped them to different projects and we saw a couple categories that didn't have any open source projects, for example, uh, then we would recommend the CNCF that, you know, we should, they should kind of um, say that we need more of these projects or there needs to be more open source projects that do this. Right. And once you have those in, like, what are the knobs you should turn on? Exactly. Yep. These things? Because having, having it as a software, like, just, like, running there, but actually not, like, set up, it's not great. Or actually consumed. Exactly. So there's, like, a default set of whatever, like, that's recommended. Like, that would be ideal. I mean, but obviously, I think you, the first thing is to create that foundational like the ha the house right <laughs> like because uh, you know people if you if you get too in the weeds then people just look at the document like what you know like th that's that's my take on it right. yeah it has to be a progression right it's like yep you couch to to secure and like people talk about secure by default as this panacea and like if you make it super restricted well for one if you if you publish this this thing with all these recommended practices people are going to be like what like where do I even start? But if then if we ship like this controls in restrictive mode without explaining the why, people are just gonna like bypass them as opposed to like, hey, you're doing this stuff that's not ideal. Actually consider running it like the restrictive way or the secure way. Right. Like phase one audit detection phase two you know actual controls and and you know postmortem incident response no it's it's completely totally understand that that's awesome hey brandon one question comparing the white paper with the landscape you shared and comparing that with cncf landscape i wonder we may end up creating some sort of a mapping because I see like different categories in CNCF landscape. And if we compare it with white paper, we have those four workflow phases, right? Uh, develop, distribute, deploy, auto uh, and runtime. So I, I wonder whether that would create a confusion or should we kind of baseline to one or the other? Uh, because otherwise if you have to map CNCF project to one of those four phases, and then map it back to a category, it might create a lot of confusion. Gotcha. Yeah, Pushka, I think that's a, that's a, um, definitely a thing we have to look at, but um, I think we're gonna see this as kind of like independent of the, the cloud native security landscape. Uh, sorry, the cloud native landscape, um, okay. the overall one. Uh, I think they kind of serve different purposes. Um, okay. Yeah, I think we are, kind of looking at it more in terms of we want to be able to provide some practical usage where whereas I think the cloud native security uh, the cloud native CNCF landscape yeah. is about providing an high level overview and kind of provide and like a, I almost want to say like a scorecard for correct for correct native, yeah. yeah 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 the as you can figure as you just realize right i think the name being the same the landscape that's a good point that's a good because point because if those are different then maybe it's something else should be called something uh, so that people who are coming out without any context might not confuse these two things which maybe are unrelated that that's a really good point yeah maybe we should come up with a new name as we are talking yeah. about with assessments because 
yeah. by definition, those aren't assessments either. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I think I think we can. So, so I, uh, we have kind of a, a issue open. It's in the agenda. I'll, let me paste it in the chat as well. Um, if you're interested in kind of talking about this, you know, being involved with this, just um, comment on the issue. Um, we have kind of. I think mainly we're looking at you know how are we going to present this information. Uh, the content of what the information is going to be. Uh, we can get help from uh, the CNCF uh, design team to kind of help do up some mockups and things like that. Um, yeah, so if you're interested, um, put a couple comments on this. Uh, I think we are looking to kind of start focusing up on this again uh, once the, in January, so after the holiday season. All righty, Brandon, are you all set? Yep. All right. I'm going to give the floor to our to the to everyone here. Anybody have any open things for discussion? If you're reading on on that issue, the process orientation looks really good. Like, what's the context of what you're doing? Depending on that, these are the things you want to look at. When the previous person talked about mappings, it came it came to mind. Well. How about we think about outcomes? If you're after confidentiality, these are the things that you should be engineering together. If you're looking at MTLS together, these are like the three projects you can piece together to accomplish that sort of thing. So yeah, sorry to jump back onto the previous uh, topic, but just follow up thought. You make it hard for a facilitator to keep control of this meeting, Andreas, I'm telling you, man. You know, keep me on my toes. Definition of <laughs> fun. <laughs> you know it's gonna hit you back when you become the facility to interest. <laughs> I'll put you on the hot seat, my man. Um Have fun. <laughs> all righty. Um again, everybody okay at this point? Anybody have any other thoughts before we uh, I guess uh finish the meeting? Uh hey Pop, one question I was wondering what everyone is thinking. So many of us worked on the CNC security white paper. I think it's been now what two, three weeks since it was published. So what I was wondering is, is there a way we could come up with to sort of do a retrospective with while getting feedback from the community in terms of what they probably would have liked in the paper, what could have been better. Uh, and uh, that will kind of give us ideas into the next version when, whenever we publish that. Um, can you create an issue on this and then um, tag, tag myself and Emily? I think that um, this is something like the chess can go up to CNCF and get them to get us feedback for. Okay, okay, sure. I'll do that. Thanks. And with that, we bring our six security meeting for a close, everyone. Thank you all for joining. Awesome. Good job. Thank host. you, Pop. I did it. I did it. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. Awesome. Be safe, folks. Great job. Good one, everyone. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Peace. Bye. Bye. Bye.